So I like to flow with gratitude, man, because no matter what, even if you're broke or whatever, gratitude uh, will keep you flowing through life, you know? And I'm running short on that too, man, you know? You would think I'm extremely grateful to be out. Um, it came out to nothing, man. It came out to fucking my apartment's gone. My car got auctioned off five days before I got out. Nobody wanted to answer the door and let me crash on the couch for the weekend. No car. My shit's in storage. It's gonna be auctioned off on the 11th of February. It's 1,450 bucks. I don't got $14.50. You know, um, just figuring out how I'm gonna eat each day has been something, you know. I know it doesn't look like I'm running short on food, but that's probably because it's canned food from fucking a 99 cent store, you know? It's fucking winter. It's cold, you know what I mean? I'm homeless. Um, I'm all the things I swore I'd never be again, man, you know? Um, it's not pride or ego or anything like that. It's uh, embarrassment. You know, like, to say you're homeless and shit, like, especially where, what I built myself into. You know what I mean? I built myself into a pretty comfortable life. And that's gone. Everything's ripped out, gone. OG Badger, it's a pleasure to see you, man. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming, bro. We saw you hadn't tapped in at your heavy hitters website. No one knew where you were. And then, you know, Vista liquor store over here. Yeah. I bump into teardrop from Canoga park and I go, Hey, have you seen, seen the skin badge? And he goes, no nah, Holmes, but I bumped into one of his comrades out there in Reseda. And I heard he's back on the Cuchada. And when I heard that, I was like, ah, oh, fuck man, because I know you were you had such a sober base yeah and uh, when I heard that uh, a lot of fear set in about your well-being but since we've last interviewed you bro tell us the journey that's occurred man well so some of that's true like uh, the reason I dropped off my channel was because I actually had started to use Harriet and I had broke up and I went into a dark space and uh, not to make excuses, you know what I mean? Like getting high was a comfort. And I've always said during on you know, my channel, getting, you know, drugs are a big part of my story. And what I couldn't do was come on the channel and try pushing positivity being high, you know? So I actually had started using again and that just wasn't gonna work coming onto the channel. Um, I tried not to let people know in the beginning and then it got to where I was like, I don't care. You know, I mean, as most addicts, to get to that point, I don't care, you know. So at that point, I'm not running around on the streets, but I'm doing what I got to do to get by, you know what I mean? Some shit happened and I ended up going, uh, going back to the county jail, and which I never thought I would. You know what I mean? When I was with the channel, I thought everything was coasting along and, and I worked very hard every day. And, you know, the comment section in my channel is very fulfilling. I'm mean, so grateful. I'm so grateful for all the fans, man. Um, I'm, a, I'm their fan. You know what I mean? Like, I consider them my friends. And there could be 99 fucking solid comments. And then there's that one that just gets under your skin, you know? And I started getting more and more of those. So I just, I wouldn't give the, the audience a foul me. I wouldn't come on high. I just refused to. People used to say I was high all the time, but I never was high on camera. You know what I mean? Um, what ended up happening was uh, in the apartments where I lived, you know, uh, my ex-girl lived there too, and some dude ended up pushing up on her. And he was pushing up on her pretty regularly, you know, and uh, she came to me one night and she having a panic attack, you know, and she's like, fucking, he fucking forced a hug on me and then he tried kissing me and he kissed me on the forehead. And, yeah, I mean, she played me like a fiddle, you know what I mean? Like seeing her and I, at that point I thought, 
No woman should have to be. She said, I just want someone to know if I come up missing that it's him that did it. You know what I mean? And I thought to myself, no woman should have to experience that fear, man. Fuck this shit. Sorry for the language, but you know, it just didn't sit well with me. So I strolled down to his pad. His door was open. It's four o'clock in the morning. Uh, I believe, I honestly believe he was waiting for her because when I pushed the door open, he had a now, dude digs in the trash every night, you know, and he had a, he wears latex gloves on occasion digging through the trash, but he had a latex glove on and he had a brown bandana in his hand. And I believed that that was for Harriet. You know what I mean? I believed that there was chloroform or some bullshit in this thing. And I sort of snapped on the dude, you know what I mean? I was, I told him about himself, you know what I mean? I was like, you know, this isn't the first person that comes to me with this shit. If none of these women are seeking your attention, you just stay away, away from them. Uh, I threw some minor threats out there and I took off. It was no big deal to me. You know what I mean? I did tell the cat, I was like, hopefully she's calling the cops right now because, you know, he had sexually assaulted her. He had forced a hug on her and kissed her on the forehead, man. And, you know, how would you feel if somebody did that to your girl or your fucking, your sister or your mom or something? You know what I mean? Like, it didn't sit well with me, bud. So uh, I came back and I go, I told her, I said, look, hopefully that takes care of things. You know what I mean? I just went down there and told him about himself. I said, uh, I got to get ready to go to community services at six. So uh, I gotta, I'm going to take off, go get a donut and some coffee and go over and wait for community service. I didn't give it any more thought. You know what I mean? Dude's been to jail, so he should have known we don't call the cops. If we got a problem, we deal with each other. You know, I said, anytime you don't like this message, I'm happy to meet with you, you know? And uh, in California, if you call the cops first, you're the one that generally doesn't go to jail. So he was probably, I see, I assume he was probably in fear and he called the cops. He said I went down there with a gun and I fucking lopped him upside the head. And, threw a whole bunch of threatening messages out there, which I, I can attest to that. I, I did say a few things that that I feel needed to be said. You know what I mean? Like, this isn't the first incident, and uh, I just wanted it to be the last because I was moving from that complex, and I wanted her to be safe, you know? Cops show up, you know, 30 deep, whatever. Uh, SWAT team came out. Harriet calls me and says, uh, man, there's cops everywhere here. I go, cool, go tell him what happened, you know what I mean? Like, let him know what happened. Because I'm not thinking he added all the extras that he added on it, you know? I just wanted it to be known what was happening, and fucking hopefully he's going to jail. You know, that's not quite how it worked out, guys. What happened was they, uh, they cuffed Harriet up, they put her in the car, she was there for about 45 minutes, and when the SWAT team got there, they entered the building, you know, the shields, <laughs> doing whatever they do, I guess. They told her, you know, can we search your place for him? And she's like, he's not in my place, you know. And she said, can we search? They said, can we search your place? And she said, yeah, you know, which she should have. She's not, you know. Anyway, they searched her place and they let her out of cuffs. So when she calls me, now I'm in fear. Now the cops, you know, I figured the cops are looking for me. So I started calling him, you know, like, I want to tell my side of the story to the cops. You know what I mean? Like, hey, this dude pushed up on her. I just went down there and told him, leave her alone. Pretty much, that's, in my eyes, that's how it was. Just leave her alone. I was just going down there, you know, putting out a minor, uh, uh, what would you call it? An introduction with a stay away, you know? And it, that's not the way it played out. And so I was arrested. Um, I went to county, and I'm assuming I'm getting bailed out by my people or whatever. And there's no, I got a no, uh, no bail probate, probation violation put on me. And at this point, I'm starting to be in a little fear. You know what I mean? I'm like, wow, this is going the way I thought it would go. You know, um, I go to, I go to arraignment, and that's that. You know, we come back in two weeks or whatever. So. And in my head, I'm like, I'm going to trial. I haven't done anything that no, no married man, no person with a sister, no person with a brother or daughter or anything wouldn't have done. 
You know, there's a simple... Uh, you defended your lady's honor, bro. It wasn't my lady at the time. And it's, I didn't defend her honor. I went down there to defend her as a person, as an individual. So I don't want the group to think that it was any kind of jealousy or I was a mad boyfriend going down there. There was nothing of the sort. This dude has done this to another dude in the building. Um, an older lady, Toby. Sorry for putting your name out, Toby. Anyway, he had done it to another individual in the building. So this is like becoming a pattern for him, you know? And... That's not acceptable, you know? I don't, I don't believe that any woman should live in fear like that. For her to say, she couldn't breathe when she was talking to me. She, you know, which, when she's nervous, upset, I'm upset. You know what I mean? Because she's my friend at the time, you know? I'll always love her, but I got played pretty much good that day. You know, everything she said happened, happened. So I didn't get played at all. Um, I should have thought it through a little further. Let's just say that. Especially with me pushing positivity on the channel. And, and had I not been using it at the time, I probably would have come up with a different uh, conclusion as to how I would have handled things. Let's just say it like that, you know? But with me being using it at the time, being clouded, angry at everything, I was moving, I was, you know, I was just angry. So, um, things probably would have been different, you know? Um, that was that. So here we go again, you know, I've been out for a long time, you know, and here I find myself back in going through reception down at the county, um, find myself in minor withdrawals. Uh, yeah, not good, man. Just not where I wanted to be again, you know, life, the amount of, the value of life at that particular moment was zero. The county jail isn't once what it once was. It just absolutely, positively is not what it once was. And I found myself sort of like a fish out of water there. You know, I didn't know the rules. Now I'm, I, I went by old school rules. I stuck to that, you know what I mean, 100%. I, however I lived in there before, that's how I live there now. And that's not how it is now. Um, You'll see blacks eating with the whites and the Mexicans, and you'll see all this stuff, and I couldn't do that still, you know what I mean? And not that I'm racist or anything along those lines, but just that's what was instilled in me when I was young, you know, doing all that time, and it was instilled in me, you don't do this, you don't do that, and I, I forced myself to live by that, you know? And it made me the odd duck. You know, like everybody's doing what they're doing when they're spreading, and I threw in. Um, I'd tell them, hey, man, you got to break mine off before you feed everyone else. Um, I was laying down my own rules, you know what I mean? Like, because I just couldn't do what they were doing. And it's not because I was scared of what anyone would say, because everyone seemed to be doing it. It was because I couldn't have lived with myself because I was taught a certain way. That's This is how you jail. You don't do these things. So... The whites that were coming through where I was, it was really embarrassing, you know, like they were uh, homeless drug addicts. They were, uh, I don't know what other words to use except for the fact that they were an embarrassment to me, you know what I mean? And I wanted nothing to do with them, so I was pretty much flying solo. Um, I did kick it with some Southsiders there that we were all amongst the same age, you know? And what sucked was I found myself in the over 50s crowd, you know what I mean? Like, they're like, uh, uh, what, they, they call you OG, you know what I mean? And someone, some dude said, uh, you know what that stands for, right? And I'm like, original gangster, I guess. And he goes, it means you're out of gas, man, go sit down. Fucking, I got heated, bro, you know what I mean? Like, I was like, so from that point went on, man, I was telling my friend, don't call me OG fool. You know what I mean? Like, I was upset about hearing that, you know? I, I always thought OG would have been a, uh, a title you earned and you should respect, you know what I mean? But when he told me I meant you were out of gas, it didn't work for me. So uh, I've been in a few fights in there this time too, you know what I mean? Like, here I find myself uh, 57 years old, slinging them like a young pup, you know? And for starters, I don't have young pup wind. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm running out of that shit quick. Uh, my first fight, I was sitting there, I was watching TV, and well, I, don't believe, I think I was watching, uh, uh, what was the Puddin' Pop dude? 
Bill Cosby. Yeah, I was watching <laughs> like the Cosby show or some bullshit. And I'm sitting there and all of a sudden, tink, tink, tink. I feel three bee stings, man. Like, dude hit me hard. You know what I mean? Like, he hit me hard. It took me a second to get, grasp what was going on. And uh, I feel blood running down my face. And I'm like, what the fuck just happened? I get up and I charge dude with all I got. You know what I mean? And I only have one arm that functions pretty well. And I hit him with my right. He went down, his arm was locked like this, so I figure he's knocked out. And I go to stomp him out, because I'm angry, man. I'm bleeding, I'm embarrassed, you know. Uh, and some dude that I did time with like 25 years ago, his name is Porky. He goes, dude, you knocked that dude out with one arm and you didn't spill a drop of coffee, okay? So trying to, I'm trying to figure a way out to not get in too much trouble. I go, the coffee has a fucking lid on it, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's in a Pepsi bottle with a lid on it. And he goes, it doesn't matter. The story goes, you knocked him out without spilling a drop of coffee. I go, you know what, bro? All right, I appreciate that. You know what I mean? Like, letting me keep some face is what I'm thinking. So, this JK, he's called a bomber. You know what I mean? He's one of those JKs that just, he'll walk around and he starts hitting somebody for no reason, you know? So, when he comes to whatever, he was only out a few seconds. He was not that long at all, you know what I mean? But he, when he comes to, he, uh, the Southsiders snatch him, I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? He's with us, you know what I mean? Like, they're, he's digging in his ass and he's like, he stole my Bible. <laughs> I'm like, thinking, well, I did what? I don't have any tobacco, so therefore I have no use for a Bible, but you know what I mean? Like, I don't know what to tell you. I didn't touch your shit. And I, uh, his punishment, because I was adamant about him not going, you know what I mean? Because A, I would have been telling, you know, like, hey, get him out of here. And like, I was scared or something. I wasn't scared. I didn't like what he had done, because he did sting me. I'm not gonna lie, I'll fess that up on camera. But he got punished, but he had to do a thousand burpees that day and a thousand burpees the next day or whatever. So I'm thinking, all right, this is the end of it. You know what I mean? Like. Well, it wasn't the end of it, but you know what I mean? Like, I should have let him roll him up. About two weeks later, same thing. I'm sitting there watching TV, and they had the shower scrubbers that I, too, have used to assault people. He came at me with one of those, and now my good arm, when I want to block it, because I caught it at the last second in my peripheral vision, and I caught the broom, and I, bam, and it hit me right in the, you know, the back arm. And, that hurts. So now I'm pretty much <laughs> useless. I got one arm that doesn't work very good because it's, it's numb, you know? And uh, this time I didn't have to do anything to do. His own people were smashing him. They just stomped the shit out of him because uh, everybody liked how I did my time. You know what I mean? I didn't get in people's business. I didn't, you know what I mean? I just stayed in my lane. If it, did, you know, if it doesn't apply, let it fly type shit. You know what I mean? Like, uh, a lot of cats knew that where I was coming from when I'd say, hey, I'm sorry, but it's nothing personal. I just can't do that. You know what I mean? Like, and they understood, you know what I mean? I'd be like, hey man, I've been doing time since 84. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't think you're even, you weren't even born in 84, you know? So uh, I got that little shit. Anyway, uh, in that dorm, I ended up, there was a, a pipe leaking and it was leaking urine and feces and shit into a, this is how foul the county jail is. It was leaking in, they put a blanket under it so it's not going everywhere, but there was no air conditioning in there at the time. And I scratched my leg and cellulitis, I, I acquired cellulitis through that. So my leg's swelling up and I'm like, what the fuck, man? Like, you know, when something happens to you, your body, you're like, what the hell's going on, you know? So I was putting in kite after kite, hey, I need to see a doctor, hey, I needed some help, hey, you know, hey, 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 to deaf ears, it was all falling on deaf ears. Well, there was one cat that I had been with from the beginning, he was still with me, and he's like, dude, you don't look good, your leg's fucking swollen, you know what I mean? And I, I thought it was my gout acting up, you know? and. It wasn't my gout acting up. I ended up contracting cellulitis, and what happened was it had killed all the veins in my legs because it took too long to get to the hospital. So, you know, um, right now I'm looking at losing my right leg, you know. Um, 
when I finally did, he, that dude dragged me up to the front after two weeks of telling the cops, man, I need to get to a doctor. I need, you know, they, um, <laughs> no, no. okay, so they're, I'm like, I need to get to a doctor, man. But now I'm starting to hallucinate and shit. You know what I mean? My aunt and uncle's there, they're dead. You know, they've been dead for a while. And every dead person I knew was there visiting me in the county jail where I'm chopping it up with them, I'm sitting on the bed talking to them. And people are like, what are you talking to, you know what I mean? But to me, it was as real as it could be, you know? Finally, that dude snatched me up and he took me up to the booth and he's like, look at this dude's leg, man. If you guys don't fucking get him out of here to a doctor, we're gonna, we're not eating, we're gonna shut it down. And the, the booth CO looked out at my leg and she's like, Jesus Christ, why didn't you put in a form? I'm like, are you serious? Been doing this, you know, day after day. And uh, they took me out in there and uh, they took my temperature as 105.4. So she's like, well, that explains the aunt and uncle, you know what I mean? Like, and I'm like, yeah, well, it's been like this for days. So how long it had it really been? I don't know. Like, I was seriously hallucinating. I just lost. I was... Uh, you become very fragile, you know what I mean? Like, that's about a, the only word I could think of to say how I felt. Um, I went to the hospital for 14 days, bombarded with uh, every antibiotic known to man, came back to the county jail, stayed for another three days in the county jail. They sent me back to the hospital. Where'd you go, USC? USC, yeah. yeah. Um, and it's the same thing there, treat them and treat them, you know what I mean? Treat them, get them out of here, send them back to county jail. So I went back to county jail after three days. Oh no, I stayed for four days that time. Went back to county jail and then I went back to the hospital and they were talking about it, uh, putting me back in the hospital again and just doing more antibiotics. And I was like, you know what? Don't bother, man. Like, I'm not going back there and get, just weakening my immune system with all these antibiotics. It just wasn't working for me. So when I came back this time, they took me to the hospital ward. Hence, you know, the Browns. I was in a single man cell for a little over five months and 20 days. And I mean, you could literally just sit in there and die and nobody would care, you know what I mean? You couldn't suck a dick for some aspirin, you know what I mean? That's how fucking pain in the ass it was. The nurse would come and be like, you want to go back to the hospital? I'm like, what for? So I honestly believe that I, there was a good possibility of me dying in there this time. Um, can I get that looked at? Just getting old, this is all part of poor decision making. Um, you know, f from the time I was young, I started doing time and I did one nice fat ass sentence thought I would never go back, you know what I mean? I got comfortable out here, um, started channels, started a life, found a girl, did all the things that, you know, you fantasize about doing, so therefore I never thought I would go back, you know? Um, she didn't ask me to go down there, um, and I asked myself a thousand times, even knowing what I knew today, would I have done it? And the answer came up yes every time, you know? So I don't blame anybody for, I don't blame her for coming and saying what she said. She was scared. She she knew uh, I was her friend and she knew that she could count on somebody, you know? Like, and there was that, you know what I mean? That, um, I don't know what else to say on that subject, but. Right, but you know, you, you mentioned you hired a public pretender. No, I didn't hire him. I was appointed a public pretender and so this broad, she was fucking worthless as tits on a bull, man. You know what I mean? She comes in. Now, I had made a fatal mistake and I had written out. So if you're ever busted, <laughs> keep your fucking mouth shut. You know what I mean? Don't say nothing. You know, get your lawyer, uh, hopefully a, a private lawyer. But uh, I wrote out a statement saying what happened. I said, look, I didn't go down there with a the gun. I went down there and I, I defended a friend of mine. You know what I mean? And the, she said to me, she goes, I'm not going to be able to convince the jury of that. And I was like, I have a witness saying I didn't have a gun. Your own, so they, they sent the, the um, 
investigator out there and the investigator did a great job on the report. So therefore I was pretty sure I might have a good chance in trial. And I'm getting ready, we were at 10 of 10, I was getting ready to pick jury. And the judge was like, I wanna wrap this up. What's it gonna take to wrap this up? And I'm like, you fucking apologize and let me go. You know what I mean? I had been trying to fire my lawyer. Should I tell you tell what happened? Yeah, dude, this is a crazy story. So I had been trying to fire this broad, you know, she, she she's the one who made me scared like the i would hear the da talking and the da was trying to be lighter than my own lawyer was you know after i had written out that statement i stated that i had pushed the door open to do the victim's pad the victim that's so fucking funny sorry i had pushed the door open to this dude's pad so therefore that's a burglary first degree bur burglary i'm i'm entering his premises without his permission. So that's first degree burglary, that carried six years. Uh, the assault with the firearm carried six years. Anyway, she's stacking it every which way she could, making it sound as horrible as possible. And I'm like, I'm not trying to hear all that. You know what I mean? The judge wouldn't let me fire her. I said, I'd rather go pro per, you know, just, I need to get to the books. He wouldn't let me fire her. And I already sensed there was something going on between them. There was some what I would call bantering, you know, fucking courtroom play. You know what I mean? You could tell there was some kind of sexual tension between them. But uh, so I walked into the courtroom and I go, Your Honor, I need to fire my attorney. And he's all, Mr. Well, we've had this discussion before. You know what I mean? Like, do you have grounds to fire? And I go, absolutely. Right now she told me back there, she said that if I eat her pussy when I get out of here, she'll get me out today. And the whole courtroom went quiet, bro. Now, mind you guys, she didn't really say this. You know what I mean? I'm going to be honest with you. I just was trying to get the bitch fired, you know? Uh, her jaw dropped. She's like, what the fuck? And the judge was looking at her like, bitch, that's my job. You know what I mean? So <laughs> he let me fire her. You know what I mean? So at that point, uh, I fired her. The DA said, can I talk to you? I said, that's what I was looking to do. That's why I fired her. So he goes, all right, because they wanted to wrap it up. They wanted to, it would, shit had to happen that day or we were picking jury and somebody was going on vacation. Who it was, I don't care. But they, it, I was interfering with their plans. <laughs> you know what I mean, let's, what can we do to wrap this up? So uh, long story short, I ended up getting a year uh, with six years hanging over my head and should I get busted during that time, violated during that time or whatever. The year that I've done is no good. It's no credit towards it. Um, so you had already been in there a year fighting this? I, I was down uh, at, this was the 91st day. So I've been down 90 days fighting this. So the judge was going to let me go that day. With time served. Time served, yeah, yeah. So he's, but he's sentencing me to a year, but giving me time served, right? Well, <laughs> she's so pissed off about the eating the pussy thing, she said, hold on, Your Honor, he's only got 90 actual days. You know what I mean? Because he's sitting, stating, you know, six, six months, whatever, he's, so it's a year, you know, to with time served. And she jumps up and she's like, no, Your Honor, he's only got 90 days served. And I go, I looked over at her and I go, bitch, shut up, man. Like, you're fired. You got no more to do with this court proceedings. That's it. Your job's done. Uh, she pushed on and she made it, brought it to his attention that it was only, so he's like, all right. So let's re-look this over. So comes back. I come back after lunch, and he's all like, "So apparently I made a mistake. Who, you know, like you still got another ninety days to do or whatever, you know, till whatever." And I was like, "Cool, man." Like so, that turned around and bit me in the ass, you know, like realistically, because if I had let gotten sensed under her, she probably would have kept her mouth shut, you know. So that's where I've been. You know, I mean, I've been in the county jail, which I never thought I'd go there again. And I don't recommend any of you going there again. <laughs> if you haven't been there, I don't recommend you going there. It's not a fun place, bro. Bro, I just didn't understand it anymore. There was a time when that was home. I just didn't understand it anymore, to be honest with you. Well, it, it, it makes sense. I mean, you're an old school convict. You've done time in Susanville, Tracy, Corcoran, High Desert. The white boy get down, they didn't understand it. 
and apparently it's changed dramatically. Oh, absolutely. So, provided thing, I didn't win, or I, you know, I didn't take a deal or any of that shit. I, I so I couldn't comply with what was going on in there. Like I just couldn't. Uh, be part of the Rainbow Coalition and just fucking do what everyone else was doing. It just didn't sit well with me. Um, I was, and I'll be honest with you, I was afraid that when I got to the joint, people would be like, "Well, you were doing this in the county, you were doing that in the county," you know. And that's what happens too. Believe that. You know, what I mean, people can't. They'll all be doing the get along thing, and as soon as you get to the county, they're gonna okay, they're gonna um, they're gonna. Tell what you've been doing, and that's going to come back to bite you in the ass. So I figure, do the right thing. I don't got to worry about anything.